Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and uh, I'm back on Windows this time, uh, but for an awesome video and uh, today's video is going to be about Tortilla and you might be thinking to yourself, well, what exactly is this guy talking about? Is he going to start talking about Tortilla chips? Well, not really. Uh, Tortilla is essentially a fantastic tool that will allow you to automate the usage of Tor on Windows with a virtual machine. Let me elaborate a little bit further. All right, so I've been uh, I've demonstrated pretty much uh, on the channel a lot of ways or almost all of the ways one can go about uh, anonymizing yourself or your system with Tor and uh, also a VPN. So I've covered a lot of ways. We talked about proxy chains, Nipe. There there are a ver variety of other tools that you can use. Uh, you know that are system based, um, and uh, probably the only ones that I haven't covered are. Uh, Hunix, which I'm trying to, to work on to create a complete like setup video, but it gets really tricky with the adapters. So I'm working on that right now. That's also a project that's in the works. Uh, but uh, I remember from back in the day, it's actually an old school method. There was a program or a tool called Tortilla that works on Windows and is supposed to act as a gateway or an, a, a network adapter in which you can tunnel your traffic, your traffic through, uh, through Tor, uh, essentially. So really simply the, the whole idea behind it is you need to have a host system and your, uh, your guest operating system, which is going to be running in the virtual machine. Now, again, this can be any, uh, v operating system. It can be Kali Linux, it can be Parrot OS. It, it, it essentially is the operating system you, whose traffic you want to anonymize. Now, that brings me to another point. Tortilla will not allow you to anonymize your, your host operating system, which is Windows. You can do it, but you can't do both. All right. So again, you can see the, the advantages and disadvantages of each method. So like with a VM, uh, the, you, you could not use, uh, I mean, you could use both your host operating system and your virtual machine. But for this, you're going to need to, uh, for this, you're going to need to to run one or the uh, the other one exclusively. Now, of course, on Windows, uh, many people have been asking me how to anonymize this. This could be a way for you to do it. Uh, but this topic involves a lot of driver installations. And as you can see on my right hand side here, I have the dialog of uh, Windows test mode, Windows 10 Pro. And the reason I have that is because I'm currently running in, in, in a way that allows me to sign or to install unsigned drivers. All right, but I'll explain this in a second. So the files you're going to need are called, are going to be Tortilla. You're going to need the Tor Expert Bundle, which uh, you can find, sorry about that, which you can find uh, on the Tor website. And I've extracted them both here on my desktop. All right, so the websites are going to be Tor right now. As you can see, you have your Tor project. You have your Tortilla, which uh, I'll link in, a, I'll have the link in the description. And for some reason, the website is not rendering correctly. But irregardless, the download link is right over here. So we also have Tor, the, the Tor website here that has the expert bundle. I'll be linking this uh, for you in the, the description section so you can check it out for yourself. So it is quite different than the Tor browser. The Tor expert bundle will essentially uh, connect you uh, through your local host to uh, to the Tor network, uh, uh, unlike the Tor browser, which gives you the connection directly. Remember on Windows, you need a way to connect the, uh, to essentially use the local host uh, to anonymize your system. So uh, the, the, the idea pretty much, uh, pretty much remains the same. All right. So what Tortilla will do is Tortilla will install its own custom network uh, adapter or network driver. All right. Now, the awesome thing about Tortilla, if you've learned about ne uh, about networking, is it has its own stack. So this is going to be unlike anything else. Uh, when I talk about VPNs, you can say something like VPN has it, uh, like NordVPN has its own stack, but not a complete stack. With Tortilla, essentially what happens is the stack contains an ARP responder, a DHCP server, which is awesome. That means it's, it can also control uh, your DH, DHCP requests. You, you have your own DNS server. What does this mean? So let's say I'm using Tor and um, I'm connected to a country like Australia. It's going to use its own uh, stack DNA, DNS server, which means that uh, the DNS server is going to be in, in Australia. All right. So this method is really awesome if you don't want any IP leaks when performing penetration tests, etc., etc. All right. You then have your TCP and your IP stack in, in, in uh, that belongs in the stack. That's pretty obvious. Of course, it has a TCP IP stack. All right. So the whole process is about bridging the Tortilla network adapter to the virtual machine. All right. 
So in this case, we're going to be using VMware. That's the only way I know this has worked. As I said, this is an old school method that not a lot of people even know about. So, uh, you just bear me, just bear with me as I demonstrate this. So for those of you who in a, who are in a peculiar situation and you want to utilize this type of technology, then I really recommend that you try it out for yourself. All right. So make sure you have the Tor Expert bundle downloaded and you have your tortilla. Uh, downloaded they're both free of course and i have them on the desktop x uh, extracted and run now uh, the interesting thing about running this setup is you need to run it in a sequential order so the first thing you need to do is you need to start uh, the tor expert uh, bundle and you want to go into your tor and you want to run tor all right so this is essentially the command line and it'll uh, essentially give you the status of your connection to the tor network as you can see, it's going to establish a Tor circuit. And once it tells you that it's 100% uh, done, you're good. So you can minimize that. That is essentially means that you are connected to Tor uh, and uh, the connection is open on your local host through the port 9050, which, uh, as you know, is the same for uh, the method we use on proxy chains. Uh, and that's uh, essentially the Tor connection uh, IP. All right. So now what we need to do uh, is uh, now we need to start Tortilla. But let me explain something about Tortilla. Tortilla is going to install a network driver. All right. Now this network driver, if you're running anything later than Windows 8, it's not Windows is not going to allow you to install the driver for obvious reasons. So in order to install this driver, what you need to do is you need to enable test signing, which is also something that I had to remember because on Windows 7, it would allow you to do it. Uh, as you know, a lot of security issues there. So uh, launch your uh, your command line as administrator and you want to type, you want to use the bc, uh, the bcd edit.exe and you want to set the testing, testing, uh, test signing, sorry, test, uh, the test signing to on. All right. And once you hit enter, it's going to enable it. And then you need to restart your, your computer. So this is very important. You need to restart it to enable it to enter test mode. And once you're done installing the driver, you can turn it back off and Tortilla will still work fine. Remember the whole process is about installing the driver. All right. So once you have that gone, uh, go, done, you can then start up Tor again. And, uh, now you can move on to Tortilla. So you want to go into Tortilla. And I have the tortilla folder here and I'm just going to double click on tortilla. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's uh, going to, it's going to give you this prompt and it's going to tell you that, uh, it's going to load the configuration and initialize the variables, ensure that the tortilla adapter is installed. You then is going to initialize the communication channel with the tortilla driver. Essentially it's connecting to the tortilla driver. And then once the initialization process is complete, it's going to allow you to receive network traffic from the virtual machine. All right. Pretty simple. So you've started up Tortilla and you've started up Tor. Now you need to edit a few things with your virtual machine and the virtualization software this time is VMware. Now I've not tried this with VirtualBox and that's probably because the adapters might not be compatible with each other in terms of how they're set up. And uh, I would just recommend that you use VMware now because it's just a whole lot better. All right. So the first thing you need to do is you need to use your virtual network editor. All right. And the reason we need to do this is we need to bridge uh, we need to bridge the uh, VMware adapters to the Tortilla adapter. All right. So we want to click on this and uh, you need to launch it in uh, administrator mode, which I haven't done. So I'll launch it right now. So let's just wait for it to load the network configuration. And I'm going to hit change settings. All right. And I'm going to hit yes. All right. Awesome. And uh, now it's going to load the network configuration. And uh, I've already configured VM uh, net one, as you can see here, VM net one. Uh, I mean, sorry, VMNet zero is a bridged uh, type of adapter and the external connection, as you can see, is Tortilla adapter. Now, if you don't have any VMNet adapter here, which I doubt, then you can hit, you always hit add network. And once you've added it, make sure you select bridged. All right. So this essentially means connect VMs directly to the external network. So what adapter do we want to bridge to the virtual adapter, which in this case is VMNet zero? We want to bridge it to the Tortilla adapter. So the Tortilla adapter will be there as long as you've installed it. All right. So make sure that's selected and hit OK. Now I already have done that, so I don't need to do anything else. Now, the next setting you need to do is you need to go into your VM setting. Once you've started Kali Linux or the operating system in which you're trying to uh, use Tor on, I'm going to hit settings. 
All right, and uh, now I'm going to hit network adapter and make sure it's using the one, the, uh, the VMNet adapter that you selected uh, that is using the, that is bridged to the tortilla adapter. So I'm gonna, as you can see, it's the VMNet zero, that's correct. I'm gonna hit enter. And now let me just log into Kali Linux here. Um, all right, just give me a second. And now if I open up Firefox and I open up Tortilla, you should see a few, uh, you should see a few messages here in regards to telling you that the traffic is being routed through. Now, if you don't, uh, and uh, that's what, that's not what I'm seeing right now. What I can do is I can try and open up a website. So if I was to try google.com, um, let's see if we are able to open up anything or, or any of the traffic is passing through. If you get this error, usually if you use, if you start and stop, uh, so let's wait for this to connect. We are getting a connection, but it should uh, give you the dialogue messages here in regards to what traffic you're browsing. So for some reason that isn't working. If you get the server, uh, the server error, you can restart your network manager. So I'm going to restart mine. And uh, now we can open up Firefox again. Remember, you can use this system wide. So uh, hopefully we, we are getting the dialogues, but we aren't here. So let me just try uh, Google.com. Sorry, um, for some reason, this isn't working. Uh, let me just try Google.com again. Um, if it doesn't work, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to restart. Um, I'm going to have to restart Tortilla. So let me just do that right now. All right, so I've stopped tortilla and I'm just going to close that dialog now and let me just restart tortilla. So again, you can see that sometimes it is quite buggy, but uh, what I can do is let me just delete the, uh, the configuration file because the first time I had configured it to my own specifications. So I'm going to hit yes. Uh, so it's going to check if the tortilla adapter is there and uh, yes, we have a connection already. Uh, let me just check, um, let me just go back into my virtual machine here. And if I just try and hit google.com now, uh, let's try here. Uh, we should get these connection prompts. There we are. So google.com, uh, like so. Uh, let's see if we are currently using Tor. So th that, pr th this problem is essentially, you, you get the idea in how uh, the, in, in how it essentially works. So you have to keep on restarting the adapter because if the adapter doesn't work, then you have to, uh, you have to restart it. Otherwise, you can always restart the network manager in Kali Linux. So as you can see, it's telling me that uh, I'm in Germany and the most important test is the standard test here, which, uh, will essentially uh, show me, uh, the, uh, the DNS information, which is using the Google DNS. And that's because I have configured it with Kali Linux. So the initial DNS, it will use, uh, the, the one from the stack. So what do I mean when I talk about the stack? Um, the stack being the network adapter and this network adapter does have a stack. So it is going to respond. It has its own uh, DNS server, which means uh, it's going to use the DNS. Uh, it's going to use the DNS server from the location in which it has given you uh, in terms of the exit node. All right. So let me just discuss a few advantages and disadvantages of using a tortilla. Now, of course, one of them is you saw that sometimes you're going to get this error where you're not going to be, uh, it's going to, it's not going to connect uh, essentially here. And as you can see, it's going to now wait for you to do anything and it'll give you a log of what's going on. All right. So that's uh, one of the problems, but it doesn't happen as frequently uh, as it uh, just happened. That's because I've been testing it for a while. I always test the, the programs that I demonstrate to you guys just to make sure that they are worth using. All right. So the advantages are it will route all DNS and TCP traffic through Tor. As you know, that's a huge advantage. All right. The next uh, advantage here is, uh, let me just minimize everything. Here. The next advantage here is that no data is sent, uh, is, is sent or received unless it's going through Tor. So that means that no data is going to go through your ISP, uh, in the sense that everything is going to be routed through Tor. I hope you guys understand that now. All right. So there's no IP leaks because you're using a virtualized environment. If you're running it directly, then obviously you get the idea using the Tor browser. Okay. Uh, and obviously any connections that are, are going through, uh, that, that were running through port forwarding. For example, if you had a vir virus or malware, then the, the connection back to the attacker or the hacker would be invalid because it's going through Tor, as you already know. Uh, the, pr probably the only disadvantage of this is it's gonna, re re it requires a virtualized environment 
and it only works on windows all right so those are probably the only disadvantages but hopefully i've uh, given you uh, enough of a demonstration and uh, i've given you enough information to get it set up for yourself you can try it out for yourself it's absolutely free and you're routing all your traffic traffic through tor this is for those of you who are not really keen on vpns and you're not really keen on using proxy chain so here's another alternative for you now just a quick notice before i end the video uh, I will be continuing uh, after this video the Python for Ethical Hacking series and obviously I'll be uploading the last two videos for the Recon NG series. That's just a quick uh, reminder. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any suggestions or questions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks on my website. If you found value in this video, if you like this video, please leave a like down below and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.